So the last example has to do with why do you think bacteria produce endospores? And what kind of bacteria do you, do you suspect might do that? Now, we talked about three examples today. And each example, each of those three bacteria were gram positive. So we have gram positive bacteria. Now, what do we remember? What do we remember about gram positive? Remember, gram positive has that outer peptidoglycan layer that's per, uh, that's composed of those polysaccharides. Uh, linked up with protein. And if you think about it, that because already these gram-positive uh, bacteria have these thickened uh, cell wall layers, uh, it, it, it wouldn't be too much for them, for instance, to develop a spore state where they have an even thicker membrane around, or, or a layer, not, not even a membrane, a layer, because remember, with the peptidoglycan layer, it's underneath the peptidoglycan where we have that plasma membrane. So if we can develop a stage where the, the membrane is even uh, greater in terms of its capacity to protect, then uh, it, it doesn't take too much for those bacteria to uh, develop these endospores. And then, as we've seen in the three examples, these endospores tend to live in the soil and they can actually survive for uh, many, many years. And that's why, for instance, if you get bit by an animal or you step on a rusty nail or any of these, uh, you know, or get exposed to anthrax, for instance. And, and if you remember at 9-11, it was that whitish powder, that whitish powder, which is very dry, right? That whitish powder, powder, excuse me, were those uh, endospores from this anthrax uh, bacteria. And if you, just by ingesting this powder, you can actually reactivate uh, the growth of the bacteria, and then you get release of the toxin, and then it's a highly, highly fatal and a highly, highly uh, contagious disease. It's very dangerous, and it's very prone, for instance, to be a bioterrorism uh, agent. So that concludes our lecture for today. Thank you so much for visiting educator.com.